pause and move these tags a little bit. There we go. Start inventory. And we are starting. Change to seven. <laughs> this bin is empty. This bin is empty. Where does this go? Change to seven for the state handler, right? For our found target. So where is our state handler message for the lights? They're right on the thing. <laughs> 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 This right here, then. Change count to seventy six. <laughs> Beautiful. So, uh, we're Team Linda, also known as Team Warehouse. And uh, we were uh, assigned the task of using the HoloLens to develop an application that solves uh, a problem uh, that you would find in a typical warehouse situation. So um, I actually, uh, I'm a retail store owner here in Seattle. And so this, uh, what we decided to do was uh, try to solve a practical problem that even a small retail store owner might face um, or someone who has a small warehouse. So a lot of the um, enterprise applications that have been created for HoloLens so far have really been geared toward larger businesses, um, but smaller retailers have uh, kind of a unique set of problems. Uh, we don't have robots that go around these massive warehouses and you know perform a lot of the tasks that we have people doing uh, a lot of the work. And one of the tasks that we uh, uh, have to do either monthly or quarterly is uh, taking an inventory of all of the items uh, in the warehouse or in the back room or storage area uh, of our of our store. Um, now this is something that I uh, do personally at my store and I can tell you that it, it's a very time consuming um, and uh, tedious process involving an Excel spreadsheet and a laptop that I carry around like a platter. Um, so uh, this is Linda, she's our uh, model for uh, this uh, particular application that we developed and you can see here she's walking around with her laptop and her Excel spreadsheet looking very unhappy because of the number of hours that she has to spend cherry picking on the Excel sheet, counting all the items and entering that data manually. The process of doing retail inventory is it's not, it's not a good process. It's cognitively taxing, as Cindy said, like she'll go count and then she's literally holding a laptop up and she'll have to go she'll count and then switch work mode to basically search and find the right position in your spreadsheet and then type in there and then go back to counting. So that's difficult already and it's slow. And you, can, and you don't think about this because it's like a, a relatively simple retail function, but it's not well tooled enough for someone who might have disabilities, might not have full use of both hands to be able to do something like that. Even if they're able to write it all down, that introduces another step into the process where they can't, where that's gonna have to be entered digitally later. So it's cognitively taxing, slow, and not well-tooled. And we think it should be seamless, that you should be able to count and then confirm by gesture, confirm by gesture, 
maybe even order stock by gesture. And if the, if the count is off, you can just speak it into existence. Say that, you know, change count to whatever, and you don't have to go search and find that particular row in the spreadsheet. The system knows which product you're talking about and just changes that for you. So the progress can be tracked automatically, inventory can be updated in real time, or at the end of it, you can review what you've done and you can spit out an entirely new inventory list. So for our demo, um, you can see here we have a shelf set up uh, with the number of bins. Uh, each bin would contain a single item uh, with a particular quantity that is associated with that item. And the goal is for us to be able to identify what's in each bin, verify the count, change it if necessary, and um, from that point, uh, we're able to then, uh, at the end of the process, signify that we've uh, seen all of the, the bins, counted them all, uh, and the system will keep track of which bins have been counted and which have not, and we'll get a confirmation at the end um, that we've seen every bin, we've verified the count in each bin. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start, and uh, you guys will be able to follow along the process on the screen. Start inventory. So right there, she would have been counting the uh, number and then confirming it. And um, we didn't want to use voice commands for every single confirmation because that would get really tiring with 500 SKUs and whatnot. So we implemented an air tap on the label. Um, and uh, then you can see that the question mark turns into a check mark. And so it's, it, you can easily scan an entire row of items and find the, the ones that you haven't processed or confirmed yet. Okay, if the number is off, we can uh, modify it. So I'm going to go count this one. Change to seven. This bin is empty. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> All right. Where does this go? Okay, found it. And a light beam will show you, oh, it goes in the top bin. Okay. Oh. 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 <laughs> now, um, once you've gone through each of the items, and I'm gonna go ahead and restart since uh, we need to do that again. Start inventory. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just assume that I've counted each of these. And let's just refine with the change this way. Change to seven. Now when I get to the end, it'll automatically detect that we're finished and uh, provide us with a summary. And there's our summary there. You can see we it saved the data to a CSV file. We have three bins that we had to change the quantity of because they were over or under, four that needed reordering, and that whole reordering process could be either manual or automatic, depending on how you set it up, and uh, the number of products that we checked. Um, so now I can just hit finalize, and our inventory is complete. Uh, there's one other thing that we realized are, uh, where does this go? Uh, application could be useful for and that is uh, in a customer setting if the customer walked into the store and had an item that they wanted to know if you carried it and maybe you need for the, the person working at the store and didn't really know where in the warehouse to find the item we could actually scan the item and then I'm wondering do you have any of these hats uh, where does this go And, oh look, we do have the hat item right there, and we have three units in stock. So I <laughs> save myself a lot of time by not having to go search all the way through the warehouse to find it. We use custom vision to do the image, the classification of the items. 
uh, and basically reworking Lab 302, uh, it used the computer vision, the Azure computer vision, reworked that lab to map to a custom vision endpoint and took pictures of all our items uh, and trained the uh, custom vision on those items. And that was an inter interesting process in uh, like, how do you, what's the best uh, way to take an image uh, so that it can learn, uh, be able to differentiate from, uh, you know, a mug uh, is different from a tape, tape uh, dispenser and um, the sort of intricacies involved in that. Uh, I, just from a practical standpoint, um, we, I had the, the hollow lens on as, as I was taking pictures with the, the was it the, the device portal? Yep. Um, and uh, I kept moving my, my uh, head too quickly. Um, the, uh, it takes a, a couple seconds for the hollow lens to take, a, take the picture. So I was getting like really low um, uh, like confidence super. levels, like 10% confidence level, because I, you know, I realized, oh, uh, I'm sending it all sorts of blurry images because I'm moving my head too much. Um, so I realized from just I needed to uh, wait a couple seconds uh, until the camera actually took the picture and was able to, um, you know, obviously send a then send a clear picture up to uh, custom vision rather than a blurry one. So that was just kind of an interesting learning process. Uh, but but it was all very straightforward as far as implementing the the uh, custom vision and training it as well. Yes, sir. How how many images? Yeah, so I I trained it I probably about fifty I, images or so per yeah, but it was it was like I was like getting super low confidence levels because I was sent you know while I was using it. Um, so you're getting super low. Because I was sending I was in the end I realized I was sending custom vision blurry images. As soon as I held you know as soon as I held the uh, held my head still. As I was taking the picture, you know, give it, and I gave it a chance to send a crisp image. Yeah, it was right up ninety percent confidence and all that. And in the end, per item, how many images did we end up using? Um, in the end, how many? like like per item, how many images? Oh, I just there? kept them up. Yeah, so there's about fifty or so images, but I don't know that it necessarily needed that many images. Okay. Per item. One more follow-up question: Did you provide different perspectives of an object? Uh, so yeah. Caps yeah. So I, I was I originally sent up five, the minimum is five images, and I, I had it you know rotate. I was rotating the image, uh, or sorry, rotating the object. Uh, but then I uh, towards the end, I was just move, taking a single perspective of yeah. you know for the sake of the demo you know yeah. um, basically you know. This object yeah. moved around. Yeah. 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 So, what was so. the key learning, learning point from the custom vision aspect? What, 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 what was the most important thing you learned from that process? Yeah. Um, I think the, the most valuable thing I learned was just uh, using it in practice. Like that whole waiting for, you know, uh, waiting for the HoloLens to send a clear picture up to the to custom vision was, you know, it was all very intuitive and straightforward as far as the service was concerned, but um, implementing it on the HoloLens uh, and just learning how the HoloLens work was more of the learning experience. Okay. If that makes sense. No, it makes perfect sense. Okay. Because it was all very intuitive, you know, as far as like the, um, as far as the training the model and all that sort of thing was, yeah. Was there anything, uh, this is across all of you, was there anything with your original vision that you aspired to do that you were unable to achieve either because of, you know, constraints in the platform or things that you were hoping would, would work that couldn't quite work for you? I think we hit most of the bullet points that we came up with originally. I was concerned that we weren't going to be able to do image recognition at first, but it was actually implemented pretty quickly, and we we 
felt like we hit the major points of our project early on and could spend more time making models of Linda. <laughs> I was a little worried um, with Lewis uh, that we would have difficulty with the training, but it actually worked right out of the gate fairly well on a number of our commands. So we have uh, Lewis commands for start inventory, and then you can also end inventory prematurely. If, like, you know, if you choose to do that, you can do that with a voice command, and it'll just summarize where you're at. You can go back to it later. All of those worked really, really well. Um, and we did do some training, and we added um, quite a number of uh, intents for each command, and the process actually was much smoother than I expected. So um, uh, it was nice to learn how to set all of those services up and how to train them and how to use them properly. So that was really valuable, I think. May I follow the question, please? What, what was your, you mentioned you had some concerns before you went into teams. I'd, I'd love to know what those concerns were before you went to um, So things that, um, concerns that you were worried about certain technical aspects of the project that were going to be difficult. Um, I feel like uh, one of the things that I thought might be a little tricky is the um, the image recognition. I, I wasn't sure how well that was going to work. Okay. Um, especially if you're holding the, the item up against the carpet versus something like this or you know you, you noticed it worked even when the hat was on someone's head. Yeah. Uh, versus being held in someone's hand. So um, that, this was my first opportunity to try a project that used this type of visual, visual service and that worked really well. I've, I've used um, IBM Watson before for voice recognition, so I had a little bit of background with that. But. So the concerns were really more about the vision rather than the language you Yeah, okay. for me personally. Anyway, yeah. I didn't realize that it would train so easily with just a few utterances um, and you would find occasionally that you would stumble across an occasion where like I'm ready to stop or I'm ready to start if you used I'm ready it would uh, not quite know which one of those things you were saying but it started to figure it out just as you added more sentences in and more use cases of that How many did you begin with in the I think Sorry. you had How like 20. I did about 20 to 30 per, per intent. Yeah. 